Hey guys, today is Father's Day and it just got me thinking about how God, our Heavenly Father, loves us. And I'm going to tell you something really funny in a moment, but some people have a distorted perception of God being our Heavenly Father because they may have had poor representations of what a good father looks like here on earth. And the funny thing is, I actually had the opposite problem. So I didn't have a bad father, I actually had a really good father. And sometimes I thought that my earthly father was better than my heavenly father. What do I mean by that? Well, if my dad here on earth saw me going through something, he would rescue me from it, right? He wouldn't keep me waiting this long. If I was sick, he would heal me. If I'd been asking for something for a long time, he would answer my prayers. So this is where I had a distorted view of God. I thought my earthly father was better at loving me than my heavenly father. So for the longest time, I refused to, and I had a hard time, I wrestled with it, to believe that God loves me. But it says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 9, it says the opposite. It says, you parents, he's talking to parents, if, you, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father Give good gifts to those who ask him. The word of God says that God, our heavenly father, is better than our earthly father. He gives good gifts when we ask him. He loves his children so much. So the first thing I want to say is we have to put the word of God and what, what the word of God, the Bible says, above our feelings and our experiences. We may not feel like God loves us. We may not see it. We may think we don't deserve it. But what does the word of God say? It says he loves us. He loves us more than our earthly fathers. He loves us so intensely. And I believe it because the word of God says it. Irrespective of what I see, what I feel, what I think, I declare it by faith. And the second thing I want to say is we have to declare it with our mouths. We have to speak the word of God out loud because every single day the enemy will put these thoughts into our minds, these lies and say, oh, you don't deserve God's love. Oh, do you really think God loves you? I mean, come on. Would he actually let you go through this terrible thing? Would he actually make you wait for over a decade for this prayer that you've been praying over and over and over again? Surely God can't love you. So these are the, like, the thoughts that are running through our minds on a daily basis. But the way that we attack the thoughts that the enemy places in our mind is through the word of God. We have to speak it out loud. We have to literally proclaim it and say, no, I believe God loves me. I trust in the word of God. I know he is a good father. I know he has good gifts for me. I know that he listens to my prayers and he will answer them. I know in his right time, everything will come to pass. And I know that he is working everything out for my good because I love him and I'm called according to his purpose. So we declare that by faith, by faith, even when we don't see it or feel it. And something starts to happen when we start declaring it, we actually start to believe it. And belief is so important because as followers of Jesus, we have to believe that God loves us. So I just want to encourage you to boldly confess the word of God above your experiences and your feelings to, to proclaim what he says about you and be reminded of what God says to you because the enemy will continue to batter you. The enemy will continue to overwhelm you with his lies. So we have to work twice as hard to say, no, I am not going to allow the enemy to win this war. I will be victorious in this battle.